All right, developing this morning, deputies are investigating a suspicious death in Meadow Lake. They got a call about a missing person yesterday afternoon and went out to the 100 block of Manzana Road in Los Lunas. Deputies say they found a person dead. No further details are being released at this point, but the Valencia County Sheriff De uh, Department is calling this a suspicious death. All right, it's a story that's invoked a lot of emotion and still has everybody talking about what happened. And Omari's law could be up for another vote today at the Roundhouse. The bill named for little nine-year-old Omari Varela, who investigators say was kicked to death by his own mother in December, would allow CYFD to take kids away from parents at the first sign of some suspected abuse. Legislators are trying to make it easier for the state to intervene and prevent cases such as Omari's from happening again, but critics worry it could go too far, mistakenly taking kids out of good homes. I was a little bit worried about the fact that some children might be unduly traumatized and removed from their homes unnecessarily because of childhood injuries that are, are normal. Such as most representatives, Gail Chasey ended up voting for the law. It passed 52 to 11 in the House yesterday. It now goes to the Senate. A well, compromise. A state budget is now heading to the House after the Senate passed it last night. $6.2 billion deal has $290 million in new spending. It does give pay raises to all state workers. While the governor wanted only targeted pay hikes for law enforcement, CYFD, and new teachers. However, it does give the governor more money for her education reforms, but not as much as she wanted. A proposed constitutional amendment to raise the minimum wage throughout New Mexico has made it through three committees and the full Senate. It's one floor vote away from making it on to the November ballot. State lawmakers are debating whether or not to let voters change the Constitution so that the state minimum wage would grow annually along with inflation. The proposal would increase minimum wage from its current $7.50 to about $8.30 an hour. Last year, a similar proposal was killed in committee when Democrat Mary Helen Garcia joined Republicans. But a year later, Garcia changed her mind, voting with her party to move the minimum wage constitutional amendment forward. This time, uh, because we have several other constitutional amendments coming in, I thought, well, we might as well go that route. All that's needed to put the proposal on the November ballot is a yes vote from 36 House members. Voters overwhelmingly approved a minimum wage hike in Albuquerque back in 2012. Some say it's as deadly as drinking and driving, and now it is quite possible that New Mexico could become one of many states to ban texting while driving. The House passed the ban yesterday. It now goes to the governor's desk for signing. The fines would be $25 for the first offense and 50 bucks every time after that. Lawmakers are quickly running out of time. The session ends tomorrow. Be sure to keep it right here on News 13. We will bring you the very latest developments from the Roundhouse. We'll have complete coverage both on air and online at KRQV.com. At 535 now, the man who wants to recall the Bernalillo County Treasurer, Manny Ortiz, is about to begin collecting signatures. George Richmond, this gentleman, says he'll get the petitions out and start gathering these signatures in the next week. The county says Ortiz's long-term investments could cost taxpayers millions of dollars and already have cost them close to a million. Because of the shortfall, every department has been forced to cut 5% from its budget. Richmond needs 82,400 signatures by September to get the recall on the ballot in November. Two women who were snapping pictures while shopping in Santa Fe ended up helping cops find a burglar. Police say the women were snapping these pictures at the Shidoni Gallery near Santa Fe last Thursday. When they left, they discovered their car was broken into. The next day, there were two other car break-ins at a hiking trail near the ski basin. Now, one of those victims gave a specific description of a man in a white car. A gallery worker also gave deputies the same description. Well, police took a look at the pictures that the woman took and found one of the photos actually showed the thief's vehicle. That led cops to Richard Salazar, who now faces charges. Time right now is 536. Well, when you are strapped for cash, there are all kinds of businesses out there that will loan you money. But what happens when you default on those loans? Kim Holland went on special assignment last night. She shows us what happened in Chris Clay's case. He took out a loan from New Mexico Title Loans up in Farmington, where he put his truck up as collateral. But when he was 45 days late on his payment, two repo guys went to take the truck after midnight. 
back in May of 2010. Clay says he was reaching for paperwork in the truck, but the repo men say they thought he was getting a gun, so one of the repo men shot Clay, and it paralyzed him. I've been around the world and fought for this country, and I, I come home and I get gunned down in my own driveway. Well, the district attorney's office in San Juan County decided not to prosecute the repo men. Not for the shooting, not even for a trespassing citation. Why not? Find out tonight at 9 o'clock on Two Casa or check out the story in extended coverage anytime at KRQE.com.